the markets are closed ahead of a big earnings report from NVIDIA coming in the next 20 minutes. Very excited to see how that plays out. We'll be discussing that, the latest moves in crypto, everything we're seeing in the markets and more today on Money Never Sleeps. Welcome back. Excited to get going today. It is going to be a good one. Like I said, this is Money Never Sleeps. We are here to cover everything market related. Before we get going, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. Nothing that Kevin or I say is financial advice. So please do your own research for making any buys or sells. Kev, we saw a little bit of movement up near the end of the trading day. Crypto has had a you know a little advance. We see money coming out of stables into some of these risk assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum. We saw a strong day on the NASDAQ, up 1.6%, NVIDIA in particular, 3.7% up ahead of earnings that are going to be coming out in the next 20 minutes. A lot of excitement there. That is what is going to be moving the markets. The you know We, we can make the, uh, I made the meme earlier of, of Jensen holding up the world, holding up the financial markets, because that's what it feels like right now. But outside of that, what are you looking at in the markets as we hit the midway point in the week? Yeah, absolutely. I think crypto has been the number one thing, as usual, that I've uh, been keeping my eye on. Seems like we've got a pretty good bounce yesterday for a lot of alts. It might not be up significantly, but it is something that we need to keep an eye on because it did bounce. And we saw that a lot of people were probably opening up some late shorts, which are now being liquidated. And, you know, we'll take a look at some of those liquidation maps, too. I think crypto right now is in kind of a, in a, in a weird state where a lot of people might be believing that this bounce here is pretty significant. But I think that there might be another drop coming soon. So I'm keeping my eye on crypto. The price action is really interesting. Just want to see if we get any invalidations on those charts. But then other than that, NVIDIA, I think that's going to be the huge, uh, that's going to dictate the rest of this week and just about 17 minutes from here. Yeah, never, ever liquidate your shorts. NVIDIA is obviously the big one. It's interesting. We're seeing bond yields move down as well. You know, are people moving more into fixed income assets? Because right now it's tough to argue with the fact that you can get, you know, a six month treasury for 5.5%. You can get a two year for just under 5%. If you're expecting pain along the road ahead, not a bad place to put your money. But that is one thing. We also, like I said, it was just green across the board. I'm looking through, you know, my watch list and I'm seeing very little red on the equity side of things. Apple with a strong day, 2.2% up. Google, Tesla. Netflix up uh, about three and a half percent. Coinbase is doing well today. We are seeing just money moving around. And will this continue? It all rests on these NVIDIA earnings and the few, this upcoming continued tech rally. Like the expectations are so high. I don't know how they can beat them. But we've said that before and they found a way to do it. Is it going to, the, the biggest focus, I think, is around uh, their data center chips and what they're doing there because there is you know we know about the ai we've talked about the ai nvidia has done a great job over the years of when you think that they are down and out because people were counting them out when the video game uh slowdown was happening you know nvidia shot up during the pandemic because people were buying more video game systems and their chips were using those it started to cool off people were starting to doubt them then nope they had you know use cases for ai and they've been always like one step ahead of what the market expects. Can they do it again? I don't know. I don't know if they can pull another rabbit out of their hat, but if they do, I'm going to be a happy camper because I'm still sitting here enjoying my NVIDIA position. Nice. Yeah. Uh, it's a really weird time in this market. I think, uh, I think forward guidance is going to be a huge driver for NVIDIA. I think that's going to be one that, you know, whether the, people, the public is going to eat up whatever they're saying, or if they're just going to be like, you know what, this seems a little too good to be true. Let's uh, let's reduce some of our position because, you know, this is a pretty good move that we've seen here. I'm really interested in seeing how that plays out. Um, again, I think that we've seen a lot of the tops put in for a lot of these other stocks, and we're seeing pretty good bounces here. Like Netflix is one that makes no sense to me, but it's bouncing. And uh, we could see that definitely there's a opportunity there if you were, you know, 
it, would, it did go down pretty fast. So maybe there was a little bit of a squeeze there, a little bit of a buy option. But I think NVIDIA is in a place where we just put in the all-time high recently. Uh, after, I mean, it was in post-market too, which is really interesting. And I think that's this could be a place where we start to see, no matter what they do, potentially a bit of a sell-off. I don't think it'll be, uh, you know, we'll see how it is. Obviously, the post market right now, the post market is down maybe about six, uh, about 50 cents. It's not nothing crazy. But I do expect that to be pretty volatile. And even if we do see a bit of a push in the market, in post market, I'd be really interested to see how markets close tomorrow with NVIDIA and the NASDAQ because we had a really good move up today. I wouldn't be surprised if there is a bit of a sell-off towards the close tomorrow if uh, things are looking pretty good. Because again, there's a lot more going on in just the short time frames when it comes to these. Uh, there's traders and then there's investors. And I think the traders are going to be a little bit more apt to move the money when it comes to uh, getting to some of these high uh, levels of resistance in unknown territory. Absolutely. And anything AI related when it comes to these NVIDIA earnings is going to move in the after. It is going to, it's going to move no matter what we sure. talked about. This could be, to be a bit of a bubble. You know, what are the implications of this and the arm IPO that'll be coming next month? We'll discuss that more in the future, but you know, Netflix, for instance, there's speculation, you know, some talk that they are continuing to see, you know, a lot of it is expectation driven, right? Like people are expecting in the future, they're going to keep adding more subscribers, and that's how you know stock valuations work. But there's still there's still those headwinds, and we're not trying to, to piss in anyone's Cheerios here, but just you know manage your expectations right now. That's a great we're saying. Seeing some, we're seeing some discussion of you know is Netflix potentially a buyer of some of these you know uh, Disney sports properties? Like, could they be in the running? For taking over something like ESPN, everyone's been talking about Apple, but Netflix, their streaming is profitable. Apple's is not yet profitable. They've done well with sports so far, with things like you know their show Quarterback, uh, Drive to Survive, the F1 show. So they've shown the ability to put out sports-focused content, but they don't have any live sports yet. And I think that's obviously an area that is very intriguing to Netflix because if you can get your hand, you know, we saw Amazon spent. How many billions to just broadcast one NFL game a week, mm -hmm. right? Like if, if they can get their hands on, you know, properties like a Monday night football or any college football related IP, that would be huge for Netflix. And I think some people are starting to bet that as a possibility as well. So it's, it's so speculation driven right now. It's a really, it's a, that's why it's a fun game we're playing here, man. Mr. House GM, happy to have you joining us live. Starting to see. We are seeing, go ahead. We're starting to see NVIDIA move up a little bit. It's up about $5, 3.17% post-market. Uh, oh, no, no, it just dropped. Yeah, it's, it's moving all over the place. It was down like 50 cents. Now it's up three bucks. Like it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, hot and cold here until we get the actual data. So be some good I'm trading really, opportunities. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too interested in what is going on there for another 12 minutes until we see what the, uh, what Q their second quarter fiscal 2024, which I don't weird the way do some of these things is weird. But anyway, uh, we will not have a better idea until we see those numbers excited for that. There has been a little bit of, you know, international activity over the last couple of hours that the markets haven't, you know, markets didn't move as a result of it. And we're no experts in this field, but it has been interesting to see what's going on over in Russia with, uh, you know, the, I guess now former head of the Wagner group who apparently uh, died in that plane crash. And then also allegedly North Korea shooting off a missile. That's fun too. Uh, I really hope this doesn't lead to more escalations, but with the way that this decade has been going, it wouldn't surprise me either way. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I think, I mean, you and I have been talking about escalation for a while. Uh, just Understanding that there is a chance that there could be escalation at some point, right? That's why I think we kind of defend ourselves with some UNG, USO, anticipating you know supply chain shocks once again, and we know that the people that are involved are pretty big, uh, you know, suppliers of energy. Uh, China now liquid with natural gas, and then you know Russia with oil. So it's really interesting to see that these countries are remaining to be you know hot topics in international news. Uh, whether this news is true or not, because again, uh, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I'm very skeptical of what I read and what I see. Uh, I, I definitely think that there is a game, there's a play here. Whether uh, you know Reuters, who won't let me read any more of their articles for free, uh, says so or not, 
I think that's, you know, it's, just, it's a very similar situation the way how the Wagner Group ended up behind uh, Ukraine, uh, Kiev in Belarus, right? We saw for the past few days they were telling people to get out of Belarus. Uh, I forget who it was. Or Belarus wanted to attack someone. And now we're seeing the Wagner Group uh, wanting to move out of Belarus, too. So there's a lot of conflict going on within that region. I definitely think that this isn't the end of it. I think, if anything, this might be the beginning of something new. Uh, definitely keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, but just understand that going into election years and stuff like this, it's not out of the question that we see uh, escalation in wars that were once you know quiet for a few years start to pick up. It seems like it happens every single time. You can go every four years. There's always something that's just it's like clockwork. It's like a business that uh, every single time. I mean, fuck if we want to go back. I mean, 20, <laughs> 2020 COVID, uh, 2016 that was. I don't know, Russian collusion that we were talking about. There's, there's always something that's just like always the entire, something. every single it's time. There it is. It's, uh, yep. it's hilarious, let's, but. Let's pivot away from this and let's look at some of the crypto charts for a bit before we get those NVIDIA earnings. We're going to kind of flip the script as far as the order of operations goes for the show. So let's get into crypto. Let's look at those charts. We've got about nine minutes until Q2 earnings come out for NVIDIA. What has been catching your eye in the crypto charts? We saw Bitcoin bounce back up over 26 at 26.5. We saw ETH briefly touch 1700 and then go right back down into the 1680s. We're in this range. What are you looking at here? Yeah, this is a really weird move that we got yesterday, right? So this is the four hourly chart for Bitcoin. We're in this range between 26.8 and what I got down here, which is 25 to 75. And, you know, this has been key level of support. When we broke through it, you know, back here in June, we bounced right through it again. Uh, we've been finding key support on that range. And then we did so here. And then yesterday we had a five minute wick in one candle come all the way down and shoot up, reverse all the losses that we uh, saw and instantly start pumping to the upside. And we saw a lot of alts do something very similar. And uh, if anything, I think this is a bit of a squeeze, but I also think that we're still within the wave four that we've been charting. So I think a lot of people who are sh shorting late are definitely, you know, got squeezed out, especially those with high leverage. But we have a pretty good move here, wave one. You know, this is the top of the move and came all the way down here. So that would be considered our wave one. We got a little bounce here. Obviously, this is part of that wave two. I'm just putting this here to the height of it. And then this is, would be our wave three, right? And when I'm looking at this, I still think that this could be the bottom of our wave three within the subset move. Or we could be looking at something like this. This could be our wave four. And then our wave five could bring us down, you know, a little bit further. And there could be a bit of an extension with that. I'm honestly targeting somewhere around that 20, I would say like 24 to 23,000. I think there is a pretty good move for Bitcoin still in here. And I think a huge part of that is that rejection that we got here on this uh, four hourly chart, right? We got rejected at the 50 moving average on Bitcoin right there. And if we look at the hourly, we got rejected off the 200 EMA. So now we're trading probably between the 200 and the 50 moving average on the hourly, uh, below the 50 moving average on the four hourly. And if we look at the stochastic RSIs, we are overbought here. We're at 100 and 100 on the hourly. So there's room to the downside. And then on the four hourly, we're at 98 and 95. So there's definitely room to the downside from here. Granted, our, our daily looks like it is coming out of the oversold. It'll probably be, you know, in this range today after it closes, unless we see a significant move. But I don't think we're seeing a significant move. I think we saw a bit of a squeeze here, push up. I think it's corrected for the time being. Nothing too crazy. I don't think we've invalidated anything. I think if we invalidated anything, we'd have to come up higher than the bottom of this wave one, which sits around 28,534. So it's very possible, guys, if, if we want to look at this on the daily, maybe we come up to 27,213, and that could be our wave four, and then we have the wave five come down, which would be a lot lower. But uh, for right now, what I'm seeing, I think this is pretty, pretty much the same. I haven't seen anything that has pretty much made me think that this is going to be invalidated. I think Bitcoin still has room to the downside. I think we're just, you know, making fools of everyone this week. Uh, shorts get squeezed and then the bears go long. I mean, the bulls go long. And then next thing you know, we're down to where the, the, the wave count has us going. So for Bitcoin, nothing too crazy there. It's just interesting to see how this has played out, how we've pumped recently. And the dominance is, you know, still under 50%. Again, a large part of that is because we're so much is in stable coin dominance right now. But, uh, you know, I expect that to change soon. I think a lot of the money from stables actually went into alts, which is pretty interesting. A lot of them were oversold. 
Uh, one of them that's had a really good, you know, past day or so, I'm going to go to it. And that's been Binance. BNB has been absolutely insane, right? Uh, I think this is one that we need. It's worth mentioning. Let me move some of these lines here so you can see what some of the price action is doing here. So we were in this uh, this bear pennant and we broke out of it. And you can see it better if we look at the four hourly. We were tra trading it head ass, head ass, finally broke through. It came down. We put went all the way down here. And in some ways, you could even say that this is a bull flag. We made uh, two lower lows and two lower highs. And then eventually it just broke out of the channel and shot up into this channel. And we can see that right now we are in a pretty uh, interesting range. That's a four hourly. We're overbought in the four hourly pretty significantly. Same thing with the hourly. But uh, we keep coming up in this parallel channel that we've uh, started trading in a few hours ago, back in Wednesday, before the obviously before Thursday started. But we're below the 200 EMA and we're above the 50, so we're just kind of consolidating within this range. I honestly look at this as another scenario where this could be the wave four, and then we still have the wave five to come down. Uh, we made a really good move to the upside, right? Like uh, I don't think anyone can deny the fact that Binance went up about. 7.4% in the past two days, uh, at least to the wick highs and the wick lows where we saw everything. Um, I think a lot of people saw that we didn't do any, nothing happened when we got to 203. I think a lot of people were like, okay, it was, something was supposed to happen at 212. Something was supposed to happen at 210 with all these liquidations. Nothing happened. It's extremely oversold. Let's uh, push this up. And we saw that there was a pretty decent amount of liquidations. And I'm actually going to share my screen right now and show you this chart on CoinGlass that tells us all the liquidation levels for Binance, just because this is the game that we're playing. We got to keep an eye on where the money is. I think I just shared the same exact screen. I'm an idiot. It's okay. We're going to roll with it. We got there this. you go. Keep going. Hey, while, I'm, while, you, while we're doing that, a free idea for trading view, if anyone's listening. If you could make, with all of Kevin's fun little lines on there, when you add those to a chart, if you could have, and I don't know, Kevin, this was before your time. First computer I ever used was you had the little little turtle and it, it drew the line behind it if we could have that these days when you're drawing this line of like there's a little turtle moving back and forth on the line that'd be a lot of fun just for me personally but that's a completely off off subject uh matter right there they haven't even updated their uh their total three i don't think they give a fuck about a turtle <laughs> j-web i'm sorry <laughs> these guys well, it'd be a lot cooler if they did kevin hey i like turtles but uh you know what i like better than turtles finance going on there but uh, yeah, but right now we're just going to look at the liquidation charts. This is the BNB exchange liquidation map. So what you're seeing is everything on the red is the long liquidation leverage. So people who are going to be liquidated if the price goes in that direction. Everything over here in the green, that means people are short. This is where their liquidation levels stand. And we can see these large uh, candles up here and you can see where most of the liquidation sits. So a lot of people are using Bybit. That's the exchange. That's where we're seeing these green candles here. Binance is the orange down here and OKX is the yellow see that the price is at 217.1 right now and there's a lot on this side over here that's still able to be liquidated i mean we could go all the way up to i think i think a good level would be like two uh you know 227 226 where we could see all of these uh shorts that got liquidated you know these are a lot of people who were using i don't know like 10x leverage probably and uh you know if the price goes there they have to close their positions or they lose it or they have to keep adding more which pushes everything down which unfortunately would be a bit of a squeeze but uh we can see that the price right now is at 217 and there is actually still a lot that's uh hanging around here at that 210 all the way down to like 202 i would say i think that's about even to what we're seeing over here at 226 so i think that what we're seeing is a bit of a liquidation and this kind of lines up with what we're seeing on the you know wave four pushing up to squeeze those shorts and then you know maybe we push down to squeeze uh you know get rid of all these longs that are absolutely afraid of the price going down further so i i think this could be just another you know liquidity hunting game whether binance has any uh skin in the game in this i have no idea i think they're just concerned about you know some of their loan liquidation levels because even though they're not really saying anything we haven't had cz confirm anything we have to keep in mind that you know these liquidations are happening we have proof of them on chain uh i think that it's just a matter of time before we start to see some of the bigger dominoes start to fall. And I think a lot of that would come with Bitcoin pushing down that wave five. So that's all I got for crypto really, because Binance has been absolutely on a tear for the past two days. Bitcoin is kind of lackluster, right? It's going to make a move. I just don't think that we're going to see it. I mean, I think once we hit that 50 moving average on the four hourly, I think there's a better chance we're going to see it sooner than later. But uh, I think we're just going to maybe trap a few more longs and then maybe we push to the downside. Maybe NVIDIA has something to, to impact, you know, markets. If markets look like shit tomorrow, maybe Asia sells and then uh, the U.S. is caught, you know, holding some uh, $24,000 Bitcoin. 
I have to keep an eye on that because they definitely bid on it last night. Maybe they're willing to sell it tomorrow and screw us all over. Still here. It's 2.20 my time, 4.20 Eastern. Should be getting results. Not getting results yet. Bastards. Just sitting here refreshing the in, you know investor relations page on the website. Keep Let's vamping. See. Keep going with some of the yeah. charts. Let's do NVIDIA. Let's see what NVIDIA is up to right oh, now. Oh, shit. It is moving up. 508. Are in and, and they are, oh, boy. 508. 496. Oh, it's, it's all over the place right now. Can I see these results, please? Oh, buddy. I'm the last going. time NVIDIA reported results is when it gapped up 25%. <laughs> um, oh, so man. That's fucking shit. It's, it's, so it's it's kind of sliding all over the place right now. All right, Nvidia two Q revenue thirteen point five one billion estimated eleven point zero four. Wow, beat, so they beat by two billion. So what is future guidance going to look like? Is what I need to know. I'm not uh, seeing the, the fact that this dude. I think they're going to sell this shit off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm looking at this right now, and obviously the as soon as we went five hundred five, we just started seeing sell orders coming in. I'm very interested to see how this closes tomorrow because this could be uh, this could be definitely an inflection point. I mean, it put it an all time high in just recently, right? Like, look at that. Is that 494 right now? It's absolutely insane. That gap, that gap is so big from where it's closed today to where it is currently. Oh, dude, go back and look at May 24th to May uh, 25th, and you're gonna talk about a, a huge gap up. Oh, that I know, was, it's, it's right there. <laughs> I'm not uh, so I'm not looking at your screen right now. I'm trying to find I'm trying to get these numbers. Oh, I'm not even sh- I'm not even sure. I'm an idiot. I was just I'm selfishly just looking at my own chart. I'm sorry guys. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. Wow. Uh this is May twenty fourth. That's a wow. big gap. And we got a big gap up here now. Get the rectangle out. Wild. Well, let's see how crypto and everything reacts. Uh looks like Bitcoin Hasn't is Bitcoin's 26629. So it's back over 500 in the after hours, and it is. It's Netflix doing right now. For the time being, it's staying there. Apple's going down post market. Everyone's moving everything over into NVIDIA. Interesting. 502 right now. Jensen, you beautiful, beautiful man. Pump my bags. This is. uh... MOC imbalance, $2 billion on the buy side right now. Interesting. Anything else that we're seeing? They're doing the webcast right now, but I still am not, not finding. All right. This is all the news I found on it. NVIDIA 2Q revenue, $13.51 billion. Like I said, estimated was $11.04 billion. NVIDIA sees 3Q revenue at $16 billion plus or minus 2%. Estimated is $12.5 billion. Data center is what was huge here. So I'm look. I got the revenue trends by market and the data center numbers, which is what a lot of people were looking at here, are two and a half times what they were in Q1. Gaming is up a little bit. Professional visualizations up a little bit. Auto is slightly down. So that's a huge number. Thirteen point five billion is a huge number. Yeah, beat it by. Two and a half billion. Double. Yeah, that's almost double what they uh, what they put in last quarter. You know, their previous going back to twenty twenty two, it's almost doubled their best quarter ever. Like that is, in look out, man. Take a look at five eleven in the after hours right now. Holy lord! Oh man, my stomach hurts. <laughs> cool, buddy. Five thirteen. So well, ten percent, nine percent right now. Glad I didn't sell more of my uh, my shares weeks ago. I mean, I'm not being an asshole here, but uh, yeah, this 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 is wild. Let's look at the monthly. So you're telling this is this is fucking singularity. This is just just a straight line up. It's there's no uh, curve to this this graph. I mean, this chart. It's look now. At this. Listen. It's an outlier, I guess. I don't know, man. I don't know what to say. It is the problem is though, market, and we're just playing with it. But right now, everything else, you know, does it pick anything up with it? That's does the, it drag anything 
along with it besides the QQQ? Does it just bring along that number? You know, like what's have you looked at what AMD is doing? No, let's take a look. Tesla's up I mean, about Tesla's, you know, almost two percent after hours. Netflix is down. Microsoft is up over two percent in the after hours. Meta is up one and a quarter percent in the after hours. So maybe it is dragging everything up with it. Uh, these bastards. I knew August was going to be a bad month towards the end. He's got to survive August, I said. I'm not, I'm not going to worry too much about the after hours numbers anymore. Like the, It's so volatile. They fluctuate so much. We'll see where it opens tomorrow. We'll see where it closes tomorrow. That's what actually matters. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, yeah that's all. Right now. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been bouncing all over the place. Wild. Wild numbers, though. I mean, that's absolutely insane how much it shot up. Uh, I mean, just those are great fucking numbers. Can't you can't deny that, right? Yeah. Question They've, is guidance for Q3 at 16 billion. That's what they're expecting. So, the so they're baking. So like, okay, what upside? Like, if it, God, now I have to think. Like, if we open over 500 tomorrow, and this is all with the expectation that they're once again going to have another blowout quarter where they're going to increase revenue quarter over quarter by, what's that, 15%? Yeah. Like, that's priced in now. That's priced in now. And to beat that would be obscene. That's what you'd have to see when they report earnings again in November. So it's just like... I don't, I, you know, man, I'm sorry. I know I'm a fucking bear, but something doesn't add up here. Like, that's a lot of fucking money that we're anticipating them to be uh, making. And maybe they do from, like, I don't know, maybe China or the U.S. tries buying this shit. But for the most part, I'm looking at this. I don't know. This this seems like... I'll be honest. I'm not really too worried about the technicals on this one right now because... I know. I don't, I don't trust anything. I think it's, like, it's news-driven and people are fucking excited. I don't, I'm not going to do any charting of this obviously it's making fucking all-time highs in a bear market you know what i mean this is uh but the strength of this that's pulled up this market that's what i'm i'm like if anything bad happens with fucking nvidia is is that going to take down everything else with it because everything else is pretty fragile even though the price is shooting up it's just taking everything up with it you know what i mean we've had some just very average you know ex earnings from expectations i don't know I, I don't know how to react to this. I am I'm I'm shooketh. I don't know, man. It it's amazing, but it's also like some in the back of my head is like, I don't, be careful. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. The the press release is out now. I'm starting to read through it a little bit. Um. Yeah, I don't know. This is it's pretty wild. It is pretty wild see them continuing to to beat with expectations crazy high and they still are doing it so i don't know um now all remains to be seen is what happens tomorrow yeah i uh in the day after and yeah i still think september october is not going to be a good few months there for the stock market I don't know what NVIDIA does in that time. Maybe it stays relatively high. I think a lot of people are just, they believe, they're believers of NVIDIA, and I can't blame them. Obviously, the price is going up, but something, I don't know. I don't uh, I don't like it. Not because I'm, I don't have any exposure to it, but I don't like it because this seems like this is the strongest performing asset in the entire stock market right now, and nothing else could even come close to fucking the strength of NVIDIA. So one thing could absolutely just that takes this fucker down. I don't know. Everything's going down with it. Man. Man, oh man, oh man. It's uh <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm at a wild. loss. Yeah, I'm, I'm... You know, it, it doesn't happen often that I'm at a loss for words, but right now I am at a loss for words. I'm cautious. I think that's my uh like congrats to everyone who's had in video, right? Uh, obviously, great numbers. I'm not gonna knock you down for having. I'm glad you have some Nvidia exposure still, but I'm I'm very cautious with this because 16 billion. I'm thinking going into Q3, uh, their Q3, which technically be Q4. Thinking about how much debt there is and how much we're seeing the 
you know, we're seeing a bit of a liquidity crunch here, not just on retail, but we're also seeing it on, you know, some of the government levels. That's why we're seeing some of these interest rates spike up in the short term. And we're seeing a lot of people sell off treasuries and stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, we're seeing some escalation going on today. Just saying, I think that there's going to be bigger, uh, bigger fish to fry than AI, you know, going into the end of this year. And I'm just cautious. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I'm just but- cautious as can be. Even with that, like business rolls on, technology advances, those things don't stop as a result of that. Yeah, but and the market itself is the question, right? It's how is it going to well, react? At the same time, if this was the situation where NVIDIA was more reliant, like because gaming is still an important part of what they do, but sure. they've found so many other areas. And I'm just looking through the list of products they're releasing and what they have in development. And they're not showing, like, their foot is on the gas and assuming, I hate to assume things, that they stick with the quality of products that they always have and there's no reason to believe that they won't. I don't see why people are going to, you know, like, businesses are going to need to upgrade as we get into, you know, as AI becomes more relevant, as it becomes, as it, you know, enters more and more industries, because we're still just scratching the surface. Yeah. Now, you can talk about like their their PE ratio just being outrageous. Like I don't, I'm not going to fight you on that one for sure. Like there, that number is out of control. At the same time, like I don't know. Sometimes you just have to think that like you know what this is a this is a unicorn. This is one of those situations where trying to, you know, taking what has happened in the past and distill it and make you know applying it to this maybe is a fool's errand because maybe we're just seeing one of those. Like, I, I don't know, man. It's, it's been crazy. I'm, I got a lot to think about, but it's, uh, it's wild to see all this play out here. Yeah. I don't think this thing's going to zero or any chance. I'm not even being bearish on NVIDIA itself, but I understand that the stock market and the economy are two different things. And if one thing gets bad, we might see a reaction somewhere else. And NVIDIA could absolutely be kicking ass, but if stock price just goes down because people are selling because they're afraid. Maybe I don't feel like people, if anything we're, we're talking about, like the banking crisis, all these things that are adding up, even if NVIDIA is like doing well in terms of revenue, I think people are going to be more risk off for a period of time. So I don't think maybe NVIDIA goes down to some of the lower targets that we've been anticipating, unless there's some black fucking swan, right? Um but I definitely think it goes down a little bit, but I think that its impact on the overall NASDAQ is something that we can't, you know, deny. That NASDAQ is fucking being held together pretty much by NVIDIA. Yeah, it is. It I, is. Nothing I else the past few months. Yep, insane. For sure. so, cautious could be nothing else I got to say on that, but fucking amazing numbers. Absolutely insane. Yeah, it is. It is. And uh, we got to see what plays out here in the coming days but i think that is where we're going to wrap it up for today folks once again thank you for joining us if you have not yet hit that like button subscribe comment share us out on social we hope you enjoyed today's show i will be out the rest of this weekend uh, or the rest of this week kevin i believe is going to keep you know we're going to keep s- some stuff going on we got jerome powell speaking on friday markets are going to react you know in the past, they've they've been positive after this. I think it's going to be positive once again. Seems like we're going to keep some momentum going here. This tech rally may continue into the end of August, but that'll do it for today. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day, everyone. Love you guys. We're out of here. Take care, everyone.